Nancy Pelosi was responsible. She didn't do her job. The question was about you as president, not about former Speaker Pelosi. But I do want Vice President Harris to respond here. Newly released, never before seen footage from January 6th appears to give more context to the security breakdown. We did not have any accountability for what was going on there, and we should have. The House GOP obtaining the video of former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi speaking with her chief of staff as she evacuated the Capitol that day. Pelosi heard blaming herself for not having the National Guard on hand to stop the mob. Why weren't the National Guard there to begin with? I take responsibility for not having them just prepare for more. The video shot by Pelosi's daughter, Alexandra Pelosi, for an HBO documentary. I was at the Capitol on January 6th. I was the vice president-elect. I was also an acting senator. I was there. And on that day, the president of the United States incited a violent mob to attack our nation's capital. Come to demand that Congress do the right thing and only count the electors who have been lawfully slated, lawfully slated. I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. Today we will see whether Republicans stand strong for integrity of our elections. to desecrate our nation's capital. On that day, 140 law enforcement officers were injured, and some died. Now, some of the other news of the night, we begin with breaking news, more of it. A medical examiner's uh, off official report has ruled that New Jersey native Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick, injured during the January 6th insurrection of the Capitol, suffered a stroke and died from natural causes. Sicknick was among five people who died after the riot. Investigators initially believed Officer Sicknick was hit in the head with a fire extinguisher. Then they thought he may have ingested bear spray. But now, the medical examiner finding that a medical condition alone caused his death. But this is not an isolated situation. Let's remember Charlottesville, where there was a mob of people carrying tiki torches, spewing anti-Semitic hate. And what did the president then at the time say? There were fine people on each side. On both sides, sir, you said there was hatred, there was violence on both sides. Uh, are, well, I do think there's blame, the yes. I think there's blame on both sides. So you look at you look at both sides. I think there's blame on both sides. And you had some very bad people in that group. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists because they should be condemned totally. Let's remember that when it came to the Proud Boys, a militia. I started a men's club called the Proud Boys and we have one caveat and that is you have to be a Western chauvinist. <laughs> Now, liberals are lazy, so they hear the word chauvinist and they assume male chauvinist, and that's why I use that word, because they're too lazy to look it up, and it just means a nationalist, a patriot. And you have to think the West is the best. And it exploded. <laughs> There's thousands of members all over the world. There's Proud Boys Africa. There's Proud Boys Japan. We've got about five different divisions in Australia. And I just made it up. 
Like the, the we, we're called Proud Boys because I went to one of my kids' music recitals and some ponce got up there and while everyone's playing the piano and the violin and doing stuff they tried, he gets up and he goes, proud of your boy, I'll make you proud of your boy. It's some song from Aladdin. They tell us that we're, we're racist and we're anti-Semitic and I go, what about this black guy who's a member and this Jewish guy who's a member and they go, they're racist and anti-Semitic. <laughs> So this black guy's a white supremacist? Yes, he is. Well, that's handy. He can just sit at home and punch himself in the face all day. Like, they're... The president said, the former president said, stand back and stand by. On that point, Donald Trump, the candidate, has said in this election there will be a bloodbath if this and the outcome of this election is not to his liking. If you're listening, President Xi, and you and I are friends, but those big monster car manufacturing plants that you're building in Mexico right now, and you think you're going to get that, you're going to not hire Americans, we're going to put a 100% tariff on every single car, and you're not going to be able to sell those cars. If I get elected, now if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole... That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. But they're not going to sell those cars. They're building massive factories. What you're going to hear tonight is a detailed and dangerous plan called Project 2025 that the former president intends on implementing if he were elected again. And, uh, you know, the breaking news is Trump has nothing to do with Project 2025. Sure, a lot of us have worked in the admin and came together, but this started long before he even announced for president. What Goldman Sachs has said is that Donald Trump's plan would make the economy worse, mine would strengthen the economy. Your own economic team, of course, has made news of late, suggesting that the bigger boost to growth would come from the Harris economic plan, at least over the first couple of years. She mentioned it last night. You feel the same? That report, which was mentioned last night in the debate, came from an independent analyst. What the report did is it looked at a handful of policy issues that have been put out by both sides, and it tried to model their impact on GDP growth. What it showed is the difference between the sets of policies that they put forward was about two-tenths of one percent. Economy grows, okay, if you took these particular sets of policies they looked at, and by the way, we have no idea whether these policies, these things that are talked about will ultimately be implemented, what was the growth impact? And the differential was two-tenths of one percent. Yet with all of those lies, here's what CNN says. Kamala made one false claim and Trump 33. You know what I say? Bullshit. See you guys in the next video.